Sorry, it's getting a little dark in here, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to just do a quick little um, haul in my car. It's been a little bit since I did one, but it seemed like some of you guys really enjoyed it the last time I did it. I'm waiting for Brad to get out of an appointment. Whew. I was running into Trader Joe's and I went into this other store before I went into Trader Joe's that's called... Um, Harmon Discount Health and Beauty. Have you ever heard of this place? I've never heard of it before, but they had some good stuff in there. So I'm going to show you what I got there, and then I'll show you um, non-food related items I got at Trader Joe's. Just because everything else I got at Trader Joe's is in the trunk. <laughs> so Alex, if you're watching, ever since you did your video, I, I went and got the pot stickers, and I put it in bone broth, and that's how we had it. And it was so good that now I go to Trader Joe's regularly. And I'd never been there before in my life. So, you have got me addicted to Trader Joe's, Alex. <laughs> I wonder if anybody could see me. It's kind of funny I'm out here in, in the car during Christmas uh, rush doing a haul in my car. Why not? I decided to go ahead and try this Batiste Brunette since dry shampoos keep leaving that awful white crusty stuff in my hair. I mean, it looks like I have lice or something, which is not very cute. And then I saw this Co-Lab dry shampoo in unicorn scent. It says it's oil absorption without white residue, and it was on clearance. So I went ahead and got this also. People are getting a little grouchy out here today. It's crazy busy in here. <laughs> if you're familiar with Vegas, I'm at the Summerlin shopping mall area, downtown Summerlin. It's crazy tonight. I mean, they have a parade tonight in a certain part of it. And when Brad went to his appointment, he said there was like live music and just all kinds of stuff going on. But there's also a bunch of places to shop. And people get kind of grouchy, I have to admit. It's like you're you're doing holiday shopping, but you're like, bah humbug, and it's like, that doesn't, what? <laughs> oh, well, huh? Anyway, I got Tweezerman com uh, Clipper Combo Set. The reason I got it is, see these big clippers? I know it's super kind of dark in here. I'll try to lighten it up so it's better for you guys when you watch it, but the big one here has a flat top. I keep reading that your toenails, especially your big toenail, need to be straight across. It helps with ingrown toenails, which having been a ballerina and wearing point shoes for years, I have a problem with ingrown toes, toenails. So I want nails that are straight across because the straighter I get them, I'm noticing it's so much better for my, for my toenails. And, um, but it's hard to make it perfectly straight across, but these will do the trick. So I'm excited to finally get those. I got some toothpaste. And then when I went to check out, I saw these little Vaseline. Sorry, I know it's dark in here. These little Vaseline tubs. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to get two packs so that I can put them in the uh, care packages that I'm doing. And then they had these cute little uh, Lind... Lindell, what are they called? Lint snowman milk chocolates. And then the reason I went in there is for this Neutrogena Healthy Skin Pressed Powder. It's antioxidant blend. Can I open it? Let's see. I got it in ivory. It was the palest color they have because, you know, I glow in the dark. If you hadn't noticed with it getting dark. Well, I'm not, I'm not glowing right now, but <laughs> I'm so pale I practically do glow in the dark. barely but it's uh, antioxidant formula and then it's got the mirror on the other side so that's all stuff I wasn't planning on getting but I thought I'm gonna run in there and see if they have the pressed powder I've been looking for for my nose so then in Trader Joe's I found this hand and body cream made with Moroccan argan oil and it's fragrance free and it says up in the corner that it's nighttime moisturizer 
and that's that's what I want. I want something really thick and nice because it gets so dry here, and when it's cold out, it's even harder on my skin, I think, than in the summer. So I want something real thick to put on before I go to bed at night. Oh my gosh. Okay, I was talking about my friend Alex. <laughs> she had bought, when she went to Trader Joe's, this cedar balsam uh, candle. And <laughs> she said it smelled like a real tree. And it does. Oh, thank God, because it smells amazing. We decided not to get a tree this year since we're moving. It's just too much to unpack and then repack. We did some Christmas decorating, but... The tree is such a pain by the time you take all the ornaments out and then you have to rewrap them and repack them. And I'm already packing too much, so I don't want to deal with that. Um, and then I got some of the only other non-food item that I don't have in the trunk. Uh, very green, 100% smoothie juice with banana, mango, kiwi, apples, pineapple. So I'm going to drink that while I wait for him. So we went house hunting today. And I'm just so excited to be getting out of this apartment. <laughs> and I don't know. We did like this house. I don't know if it's the one for us or not. We need to find out some more information first and all that. But it's nice to have at least found a house so far that we liked. So... Yeah, we've been having a day together and, oh, okay, well, I guess you're just going anyway. So special. What is up with people? It's like, they're like, I'm me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's unbelievable how people drive. Like, I'm already out here. I have the right of way and this person just like forces their way in front of me. And it's just like, wow. Okay entitled much <laughs> okay the entitled car in front of me just honked at pedestrians crossing the crosswalk so I think they need some coal in their stocking this year Santa just so you know Seriously, though? What is wrong with people? Why would you be that way? Honking at, at people in a crosswalk? <laughs> this eludes me. <laughs> so, Brad and I decided to find a new doctor. And I found a new doctor. And this guy is amazing. He's a dream come true. He's like the doctors on TV or something. You call, like, okay, when I call, there's no hold time. There's somebody there to answer the phone and talk to me right away. When he says he's going to give me a referral, he hand writes it and hands it to me and immediately calls, like, because I need to get in for a mammogram and stuff. Immediately, they, they called me that afternoon. We, we heard from your doctor that you need to come in. It's like, what? Like, my last doctor, this is what finally got me to leave. I called and I said, hey, um, I told her nurse, you, you had, she had said the last time I was here that I need my yearly mammogram, but she forgot to give me my referral. They never called me back. At the end of the day, I finally called her and she says, your doctor said that you need to just go to urgent care for your mammogram she won't give you a referral. Excuse me? <laughs> For a mammogram, which I need, I need that every year. It's just part of regular preventative care. You're not going to give me a referral? And you're telling me you go to urgent care, which is like kind of expensive? Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Okay, let's see here. Going here. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And then when Brad had that eye, that tear in his retina, she told him to go to urgent care. 
And it's like, um, no. They don't have eye doctors at urgent care. And I don't think they have mammogram machines either. <laughs> it's like, how much money do you think I have? <laughs> Just go from doctor to doctor to doctor to place to place to place, you know, that's, and it just got to where we were tired of being treated like we were putting her out wanting to you know take care of ourselves oh <laughs> people are getting their rude socks on today or they're wearing them they're not getting them on whoa okay it's cool you don't have to stop at your stop sign <laughs> what the heck is wrong with everybody? So we slept in today. We had delicious cereal for breakfast. And we... We just... We've been having a great day. We went and looked at... There's a house that I really liked that I saw online. So we went to go look at it. And... Like I said, we I really like it. We'll see. Maybe it'll work out, maybe it won't. I try to not, um, I try to not count my eggs before they've hatched. Because of that, I'm going to hold out on getting excited. Yes, I found a house that I like, but until, until I actually get the house or it looks like it's moving that way, I'm not going to get excited about it. But it is exciting just to know that we're leaving this apartment. <laughs> this apartment complex that we hate. Okay. Yay. I got a good parking spot. The parking fairies are with me today. <laughs> my my aunt calls them parking fairies because I told her I always get the best parking spots. And she goes, oh, you have a parking fairy. <laughs> yes, I do. And my parking fairy loves me so much. Brad and I just got home. It's uh, it's really getting exhausting just trying to find a house, you guys. Over the weekend, we went and looked at a house that honestly I think is the perfect house for us. Like we, we really love the house. But there was two questions we had that we need to know the answer to before we fill in an application. And we haven't heard back from the realtor yet. And I know the holidays are coming. But it's kind of getting annoying because when we've tried to look at houses before, we were told that we're looking too soon. Give it more time and then start contacting them. So we gave it a little more time. Now they're like, um, it's the holidays. You could wait for a couple of weeks. And it's like, no, 
I need to know where I'm moving a couple weeks ahead of time. I'm not going to just get approved and move in the next day. Like that's not the game I'm trying to play. So, uh, the first house, I'll tell you about that house and then I'll tell you about the house that we just saw tonight. Um, it's crazy how different houses can be, but one house was in a very nice neighborhood, a very safe neighborhood. Um, it was on a corner lot. So we would have neighbors on one side. It had a, um, a driveway with a two car garage and it really didn't have much for a yard, but it's Vegas. It was a three bedroom, two bath. I just <laughs> loved the house and so did Brad. So part of why we're, we're getting, or not part of why, the reason that we're getting a three bedroom is I might've mentioned this before. We each need our own office. Um, he is in conference calls a lot. And when he is, I can't answer my work phone. And if I do, I could go out in the living room, but um, the work I do is on my computer. And so I can't really do anything. And when I'm on the phone, it's harder for him to concentrate with what he's doing. I'm talking to truck drivers all day. So I have to talk really loud and I'm kind of ob obnoxiously loud so they can hear me over the engine. And, um, I don't think that that is a good recipe for him either. <laughs> so we each need our own office. And at this first house that we looked at, it was just perfect. It had the perfect layout in the guest bathroom for the cats to have their litter box. It had, it was kind of nice because the, I mean, if we end up getting it, I'll show you the inside of the house. I'll film it so you can kind of see the layout, but the bathroom is in the middle of the two offices or the two bedrooms that would be our offices. And so there's all this space between what would be our offices. So he, we won't be able to hear each other and it'll be just so nice to be able to just work and not stress each other out. And you know, we, since we work from home, we kind of need our space from each other sometimes too. The bedroom was a little bigger than what we have now. And the bathroom was very nice. The closet and the, and the main bedroom was larger than we have now. So that's nice. And it had something that I really love in the kitchen. If I'm at the sink, I want a window above the sink and I want to be able to look out that window. It's something beautiful, something relaxing, something to make me go, isn't this great? <laughs> Well, at that house, the whole house, it was a one story house. So out the window, it could be whatever I put out the window because it's, you know, one story. But also if I look out the window, um, I can see mountains, which I love looking at mountains. That's part of why I love Vegas. In any direction you look, you can see mountains. It was just the perfect layout for us. Okay. Um, so then the, the, the house tonight, um, it was in a totally different neighborhood. Um, I'm not going to say it wasn't a nice neighborhood, but it wasn't as nice. It was not in a gated community. And one thing that they have here in Vegas a lot is they'll have a house. Okay. So here's the house and the driveway is the size of a sidewalk. <laughs> like it goes out four feet maybe. And so you could not park a car there, but the way that the sidewalks go, you couldn't even parallel park a car there. It's just got red all the way across. Like you're not allowed to, you know, the red paint, you're not allowed to park here. So the garage is one of those garages. It's a one car garage with two, like you could put two cars in it, but like this, not side by side, but like this, which, you know, Brad has a work truck. There's no way he could fit it in there. So, one thing we've noticed when we've gone to people's houses, if they live in communities like this, it's such a pain trying to find somewhere to park. And so we get into the house though. And well, the other thing is there's houses on all three sides. And then in the front of the house, it's an alleyway, which, you know, we're dealing with right now with how loud the alleyway is. <laughs> well, that would be going on there as well, I think. Um, and of course there was a bunch of kids playing and stuff. And, um, we're trying to get away from that. <laughs> um, 
not that we care if kids are around, but when it's in an alley like that, it's just so obnoxiously loud during the work day, on the weekends, at night, when you're trying to go to sleep. Because a lot of people, oddly enough, their kids are still out playing at 1030 at night. I don't know what's going on, but it's it's a little different than when, you know, when I was a kid. But anyway, so you walk in, it's a three-story house. And all the bathrooms were tiny. Even the master bathroom was one sink and with no counter around it. No medicine cabinet. Nowhere to store anything in that bathroom. I don't even know where you'd put a toothbrush. And the closet was smaller than the one we have here in the apartment. And the bathroom was the kind where if you open the door, you hit the toilet with the door. And then there's a bathtub next to it that you have to crawl over the toilet to get into the bathtub. It's like, okay. Um, so then the two offices were smaller than at the first house. Um, the kitchen was nice. But then we're thinking, okay, with the way the stairs are, you'd really have to run up a lot of stairs with groceries, multiple sets of stairs, just to get the groceries into the kitchen. So that would be an issue. If you didn't cook from home, like like if you didn't cook like I do, it probably wouldn't be a big deal. You just have stuff to make sandwiches and like have food delivered and stuff. But if you're somebody like me who has a lot of food in your house all the time, that might be a problem. It might be a big problem. <laughs> I found out from the landlord that we could have a cat, and, you know, we could have our cats and we could get a dog, but there's nowhere to walk the dog. There's no grass anywhere. It's like, um, okay. So it just kind of kept multiplying all the things that we just didn't like about the second house. Um, so there is a window out uh, above the sink, but if I look out it, all I see is into the neighbor's home behind the house. There's nothing else to look at. There's no view. There's no trees, plants, nothing, just a neighbor's house. <laughs> and it's that way with all the windows. Like if you were to open the blinds, you would see into someone else's house. There's no, so it almost seems like it'd feel like living in the city like we do now again. Um, It'd almost be like being in an apartment, just no walls are connected to anyone, but you're so close to everyone in this neighborhood. So I, for us, now the rent is $75 less a month, but my gosh, when you start talking about all the different things I just mentioned, I think it's worth <laughs> the extra $75 to have all these things. Um, the one concern with our, the first house was we feel like with the way that this place is and how nice it is and how well kept it is, it's even got its own park and all kinds of nice stuff. It's got to have an HOA attached to it. And do we pay that or does a landlord? So that's one question we have because it's a little out of our comfortable budget if we have to pay an HOA on top of the rent. The other question that we have is why is there no washer and dryer in this house? Do we have to provide our own? And that's not necessarily a deal breaker, but it's really something to think about because that's kind of a big purchase that we would have to do. And are they on back order? Like so many things are right now. Gosh, it's interesting how we really all do have certain things that we want or need in a home. And then other things that we really don't care about. Like I don't care. Well, there's a lot of things I feel like I don't care about, but but yeah, sometimes a place just feels like home and sometimes a place just doesn't. And you never know which one's going to feel like what. That's why I'm surprised that so many people I've been discovering, looking for a home now, that a lot of people just get a house without even going into it. They just look at it online and, and buy the house or they look at it online and rent it. And it's like, are you sure you want to do that? Because sometimes when you show up, the picture's did it too much justice. Like that was the other thing, the second house. And Brad said, well, maybe they're just waiting to find out that it was rented first, but they hadn't cleaned it. And it was messy, like dirty, like it. And I was kind of disgusted. Like, why would you be showing a house without cleaning it first? <laughs> the first house was immaculate. You could eat off the floor and feel fine. <laughs> like it was so beautiful. It almost felt like going into a hotel, like a nice hotel with how clean it was. But 
we'll see what happens. I'm looking at one more house tomorrow. And the only reason that we haven't secured the first house is we haven't heard back from the realtor. <laughs> he set it up for us to go look at it. And now he wasn't there. That was one of those con um, contact free um, house viewing situations where they give you the code. You can get into the box with the key yourself and, and then go into the house, which was great. It was kind of nice looking at it without somebody hovering and like asking us a bunch of questions and that kind of stuff. I preferred it that way. But I don't know if he's on vacation or what, but he hasn't responded. So until I know the answers to those questions about the HOA and the washer and dryer, I don't want to put a deposit on the house or, or fill out an application or anything like that. So I have one other house I'm looking at tomorrow and three's always been my lucky number. So that's kind of our thing was, well, it's not a bad idea to have three houses, have your favorite one that's okay. And then like your last resort house kind of picked out to where then you can figure out where to go from there. But if we don't, if we don't like the house tomorrow and we still haven't heard back from the realtor for the first house, I might keep looking for a bit. I don't want to. I'm already so tired of looking. I've been looking for a long time online and I'm just over it. But the big thing is I don't want to end up in a last resort house because we're not going to be happy there. And the house that we went to tonight was a last resort, an absolute last resort. We just, neither one of us liked much about it at all. Well, one thing, it's a two-story house, which is our preference, actually, because I want to go up and down stairs. I want, you know, some help with exercise and losing weight and movement, and I think it'll be really nice to be able to go up and down the stairs. The other nice thing is, so at this house, it's got a fireplace, which I really wanted a fireplace. It's got a bigger uh, kitchen and a bigger dining room than the first house. So when I say the other house, I'm just talking about the first house. We'll leave the second one out of the equation because we didn't like it, right? Um, it's got a huge porch or balcony, sorry, on the top floor. So it's kind of cool. You'll, I'll show you a video when we get the house, but when you walk in, you can either go upstairs or downstairs. So it's, what do you call it, a split level go up the stairs you immediately go into the living room and then there's a dining room in the kitchen and then if you go through the kitchen um, there's a bathroom there if you go further that's where our bedroom is and our bathroom and stuff we didn't like the bedroom or the bathroom that we'll have at this house as much but you know we'll, we'll get to I'm just telling you all the different little ins and outs because some people like hearing all this <laughs> Then on the first floor, there's an office for each of us with a bathroom in between the two. And there is a family room down there with a sliding glass door and a huge porch and a nice big backyard and stuff. Those are big selling points for us, having all of that. Now, the offices aren't as big as they were at the first house. But we like the area, we, but we like the area, the neighborhood's good. We actually really liked both neighborhoods. This one had a washer and dryer, so that was nice. And they have, it, they're in their own room, which is kind of nice too. We really liked that all the living stuff is upstairs and then all the working stuff is downstairs. So at the end of the day, when we're done working, we can go upstairs and feel like, we're not still at work because that's one thing the way that our apartment's laid out it feels like we're always at work you know <laughs> and I want to be able to leave work at the end of the day but the big selling point I mean aside from the two-story house is bigger it's got a better backyard you know all that kind of stuff the big thing too is they'll accept dogs any size that's a big one for me because I want a nice I want a dog that'll protect me when Brad's out of town. I don't, 
I don't have anything against small dogs, but I don't feel like they scare people the way a big one would. <laughs> um, so that's a big selling point. The other thing is the customer service was so much better. So out here, apparently it's, you know, I'm, I'm a Gen Xer, right? I always think about the good old days. You used to be able to just look at the newspaper or go online to a couple websites, you know, depending on what era we're talking about, look up what houses are available, go to the house. And usually it was the landlord that would show you the house if you're renting one like we are. Or there might be a realtor. Maybe the house is available through a realty company or something. But now, if you are looking for a rental house to move into, and by the way, look at the beautiful view behind me. If you can see the mountains in the distance, oh, in person it's gorgeous. Anyway, <laughs> you have to use a property management company who the houses are for rent at, or where they're for rent at, or you have to uh, get a realtor of your own to search for houses for you and pay for that separately as well. This whole just finding places and dealing with the landlord directly and stuff, those days are gone. I don't know if it's everywhere, but here it is. And that, I mean, I guess that's fine. At least then you know that the person's not in foreclosure. Like we, we rented a house when we, right after we got married. So 10 years ago, we rented this house and we found out after we moved in that the guy was in foreclosure. And luckily the next manager that we had or the next owner that we had was wanting to rent out. So we just stayed there, but whew, that was a nightmare. Anyway, <laughs> this place is just so much easier to deal with. We ended up applying for the third house. And I will let you know in a future video if we got it or not. We're still waiting to hear back. Cross your fingers for us, please. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or night. I love you. Bye.